Sure. This talk is about porting wine to Android, which is the thing I've been working on for several months now. So I'm going to present quickly the goals of the project, which are probably fairly easy to guess. I'm going to show what is working today. It should also be pretty quick because that's not a whole lot. And then explain some of the technical challenges and explain what remains to be done, which will be a lot longer. There's a pretty big list of things to do. So the goal, first goal is obviously to run Windows binaries on Intel Android devices. Windows binaries being built for Intel CPUs, so we need an Intel CPU in the device. That's basically exactly what we do on Linux and Mac. The other possibility is to use Wine to port Windows source code to create um, native Android binaries with packages. This, of course, opens the possibility to also support ARM devices. The tricky part is you need the source code for the entire application, which most most uh, vendors don't have the source for the whole applications. Most Windows apps always use some kind of third-party DLL and then you get into the, the CPU uh, compatibility problem again. And then the last goal is, of course, to run the Windows binaries on ARM devices, which is an interesting challenge. But of course, since most Android devices are using ARM, then this is what going to make the project really useful. So what is working today? We've added support for the Ionix C library. So Android is using a Linux kernel, so that part is obviously working already fine. But the C library is different, so we had to port one to the C library. It's mostly adding configure checks and replacing functions that are missing and stuff like that. So that was fairly easy. That's all in the in the wine tree now. So if you get the wine source, you can build for Intel Android or ARM Android simply with the configure online. You have to install the Android NDK of course and then you can build an Android version of wine. Of course, what you get if you do this is that it's a version of Wine that lets you run common line applications, which is not all that interesting. And also, if you try this configure, you will get a huge list of warnings about missing libraries, because there is a ton of libraries. Well, a number of libraries that Wine is using, we try to keep it down to a minimum, but we still need a number of external dependencies. And these are, of course, not provided with the Android NDK. So if you actually want a version of Wine that is useful, you then need to cross-compile a number of other libraries, which most of the time is also just a matter of doing configure that's dash dash host and build the library. But some of them are more tricky. This is, of course, not really a wine issue, so not something we can we can really do anything about. But it's, I mean, if you want to build a full package, that that's one of the problems we have. You need to build a lot more than just wine. And the last thing that is working today is a basic graphics driver that I've put together that is not in the wine tree at the moment. It's basically on my disk and that's all. And this driver is using wine in desktop mode. So that's the mode where everything is inside a single window and you have the windows, uh, window management, so windows decoration and stuff like that. So this is not supposed to be the final driver. I'm hoping to do a driver that integrates, integrates much better with the Android OS that doesn't look too much like Windows. But at least it lets you see that 
the applications are working and make sure that it behaves reasonably. So at this point, I'm going to try to show it. So this is uh, Android for Intel running in VirtualBox on the Mac. I don't have an actual Intel device here, so it's still it's still native uh, Intel CPU. It is a bit slow, but that's because of VirtualBox. The Android itself is a bit slow. Why? Cool. So as you can see, you get a uh, Wine application on your Android uh, Task Manager. That's one of the things we are trying to address, is that you don't really want Wine here, you want your applications. So if you install Office, you would want Word and Excel <coughs> icons on the, the Android Task Manager. But right now, all you get is wine, and then start wine, and hopefully get some. Yes. So I've made it start a <coughs> common prompt. So this is the standard wine desktop that you get on Linux if you enable desktop mode. And uh, the icons are the desktop launchers. So if you put link files in the desktop directory, you get you get the icons. It's the same as on Linux. And so it works just fine. I can start PowerPoint. Hopefully there's no feedback when you click the icons, so it's a bit tricky to know if it really started or not. Yes. So this is PowerPoint on Android. Yes. So um, I'm cheating a bit here because I have an actual hardware keyboard and hardware mouse, which makes everything easier to use. <laughs> this one on an actual tablet, it can get kind of tricky to click on the on the icons and I mean you have to use your finger and your finger is probably big like that. <laughs> <laughs> In this case PowerPoint is actually pretty good at scaling up the interface. So I, I tell PowerPoint that it's on a high DPI screen and it scales everything up. So you can actually use it with your finger. It's more or less usable. One problem you have is, for instance, if you try to exit PowerPoint, the exit option is somewhere here. <laughs> so, because it's scaled up, then there's no way it can fit everything on the screen. So that's one of the things uh, we need to address. Is to have some kind of, of panning or zooming, unzooming of the, of the interface so that you can use a desktop application on a, on a small device. <coughs> but apart from that, you can do too much anything. Um, what we have up there is the software keyboard icon. So if you <laughs> click that, you get the Android software keyboard, which of course is eating out the screen. Um, I also had some hacks that tried to pop up the keyboard when the application is showing the blinking current automatically, but that doesn't quite work at the moment. So there is this icon that you can use to, to show and hide the software keyboard. And for some reason, the keyboard doesn't work right, but that's not one spot, that's Android. It should go. It should go all the way here. And if I if I click on P, it actually presses I because I don't know. It's scaling this way. But 
it happens the same way in native Android apps, so it's not my fault. And then you can hide the keyboard again to see what you're doing. That's it for PowerPoint. And then, uh, again, as you see, this is desktop mode, so you get Windows decoration, you get uh, Win95 style graphics. I mean, it's, it's purely Windows, it's not very integrated. So, again, the goal would be to make this be an Android dialog, like a native, native Android as far as possible. And that's basically all that's working. Try to switch tasks. Again, what you see if you go to the to the task manager is you see just one. What you would really prefer is to have PowerPoint, Word and so on in the Android Task Manager and be able to switch applications this way. But for the moment, you have to go back to Wine and then inside Wine you switch to a different application. Right, and if you quit, then it's... I think it's... Oh, it's still working. Sometimes you quit and it doesn't come back. But so that's so going back <laughs> this is what is working so some of the problems with I've had to, to achieve that and I will have to achieve a lot more first is Java of course Android applications are written in Java. And there are actually fairly good mechanisms in Java to call native code and from native code to call back into Java. So this is actually fairly, fairly well thought out. One of the issues with Android specifically is that most of the Android APIs, especially window management and so on, can only be called on the main Java thread. So you can call Java methods from the native app, but it doesn't really help because you're not on the right thread. So you still need some, some messaging mechanism to, to make Java calls. Which leads us to the issue of the process architecture. Because if you're running in Java, of course, you need a Java process with a Java virtual machine. And that doesn't really suit itself to running uh, Windows binaries, which really want to be in their own separate process. So uh, the next slide will explain more about the, the process architecture. There is the issue, of course, of the missing libraries. So this is the list of libraries that I've had to cross-compile to be able to run Microsoft Office. It's already a fair bit and there are more than you need if you want a full wine version there are even more than that most of these were actually fairly easy some is probably the worst at cross compiling and that's Samba 3 Samba 4 is hopeless never able to cross compile <laughs> The other issue, of course, is uh, lack of keyboard and mouse. So you don't really see the issue because I had uh, keyboard and mouse. You can use the software Android keyboard, of course, for entering te text. That just works. But if you want to run some games, for instance, that want special keys, or that wants to use the keys as control instead of text input, then we need some sort of, of mechanism for that. Probably a virtual PC keyboard where you can enter more than just text, where you have function keys, where you have that sort of thing. And the mouse, of course, is also the problem that 
you need a you need a very uh, precise pointer for many Windows apps, especially Windows apps that don't scale up the, the interface, don't scale up all the buttons, because then you get you get very small buttons, and we need some way of being able, for instance, to zoom a specific part of the interface or. I was considering maybe when you touch a button, it would zoom up, and then you can touch the actual place that you meant, something like that. So that's, that's all in the air for now. High DPI screens, obviously, that, that's the main problem. Most tablets have a very high resolution, but a very small screen. So we need a way to, to pan and zoom. But you will have that now on the desktop. Yes, it's, it's getting more, more common also on the desktop, yes. And there are ways in Windows to use high DPIs and modern applications handle that correctly, but of course the old ones don't. And PowerPoint was a very good example of an app that's done right, but that's because Microsoft can afford to do that. Many other apps don't show one later on. So yeah, we need, we need a way to do that. And it's a bit tricky because the zoom, you cannot do a clean zoom like you do when you're using a web browser. When you zoom and it re-renders the web page in a higher resolution. With the Windows app, of course, all we can do is, is blow up the pixels. So it's not going to look very, very nice. But that's basically the best we can do. As far as OpenGL, there's only OpenGL ES on Android devices, which is, uh, of course, not something we support at the moment. So we need to be able to do direct 3D on top of OpenGL ES and not just OpenGL. And if you want to run OpenGL games, then we need OpenGL on top of OpenGL ES. So that's an interesting challenge. And of course, at the moment, there's no way at all that we can do OpenGL. Because what I'm doing with the desktop mode uh, graphics driver is that it's basically a, a display surface that I'm copying the bits into from the different applications. So there are actually several copies of the, of the uh, window bits into the desktop and then from the desktop into Android. And of course, with OpenGL, you cannot copy the bits three times across different processes. So at the moment, there is absolutely zero OpenGL support. And I don't know when we'll have it. And then, there are a number of restrictions when you want to distribute Android packages. You need to sign the packages, for instance. And that's a problem if we want, like I mentioned, to have the Windows applications on the task manager. Right now you have a wine icon, so that's a wine package. But what you really want is PowerPoint, Word, and so on. And to be able to have that on the task manager, they basically need to be Android packages, which ideally you would, when you install an application, you would generate the package to make it appear on the task manager screen, but you cannot generate the package because it needs to be signed. So there are ways around that, but it's it's kind of tricky to make it look like a Windows app is actually an Android package. And if you want to distribute the packages, for instance, in the Google Play Store, then there are also size limitations. Packages can be only 50 megs in size. And once you put all of wine in the package, it's basically over 50 megs over so That's kind of tricky. What you have to do is to create a separate package that you download separately from the main package and install the wine library somewhere else. And I don't know, so for now, I just upload the package to USB, so there's no size limitation. That's, that's going to be addressed. 
So a little bit about the architecture, how this is all working. <coughs> so in Android, normally you have a Java <coughs> process, so this is the main process that's running the Java VM. And you have all the Android uh, Java classes running inside that process. And you don't actually have much control over the process layout in Java, so you cannot, for instance, tell Java, create me a new process. So what I'm doing is the wine activity, so this is a Java class that's basically an activity, an activity is, a, is an Android uh, application. The wine activity would load the Windows uh, wine libraries inside the Java process. So in this case, it would be explorer.exe because that's the desktop process. It's the one that's doing all the desktop. Of course, I'm showing explorer here, but it also loads NTD and that kernel, user 32 and all, everything. So these get loaded inside the Java process. But when you want to start a new one process, then you cannot do that from Java because it would all be still inside the same process. So what I do is, is fork and exec a wine process, which is then a purely Unix process. It has no Java, it is, it's basically a Linux process. And that makes things a bit trickier because from the wine processes, you want to display something on the screen. There's no way of doing that because you would have to make Java calls. But you cannot make Java calls from a process that is not inside the Java process. So we actually, at the moment, I have actually everything going to the wine server. And for displaying Windows, I use shared memory. And everything else is using basically Win32 messages and stuff like that going to the wine server which is also a separate uh, Unix process. <coughs> the advantage of doing it this way is that we have plain wine processes here. We control the, the address space layout. We can use the wine preloader to set up the address space. We can have signal handlers. We can do everything we do on Linux. Basically, it's, it's, a, it's a standard Linux process. I tried at some point to make every process into a Java process so that we can do Java calls from any, any one process, but it's, it's very difficult. There is no way you can get control over the Java process. You cannot pass file descriptors. You cannot set environment variables, stuff like that. So this is, this is the, the architecture I'm, I'm setting. So what remains to be done now is, of course, the user driver. So that's all the, basically all the window management, all the things having to do with the clipboard, with mouse and keyboard. With, it's, it's really a big task. It's the, at least as big as the Mac driver that we did for the last release. And this was probably, it took a year basically to the Mac driver, so I expect the Android driver is going to take at least as much time. And that, that's mainly what I'm working on now. We're doing the window management to integrate more into the, the Android desktop, get rid of the desktop mode, make basically every Windows app into a full screen Android app, use Android pop-ups for the pop-up dialogues and stuff like that. We need, of course, to do Eric 3D and OpenGL on top of OpenGL ES. That's also a fairly big task. We need sound support. There are uh, sound APIs that are usable from native code on Android. It's based on OpenSL, I think, which is kind of like OpenAL, only different. So, yeah. <coughs> I have no idea how hard that's going to be, but that's going to be Andrew's problem at some point. It may not be that hard. 
it's not it's not that different from Linux. Then I need to figure out how to make all of this build from the one tree, which is going to be interesting because there is Java code. And of course, I can put the graphics driver in the one tree, but the graphics driver is not going to do anything useful unless it can call Java. And the Java code needs to be in the one tree, but you really cannot build Java simply from a make file. You have all sorts of, you have, uh, all the built infrastructure for Java is in Java. And I don't know how it's all going to be able to be integrated and how I'm going to make it possible for people to just run make and get an Android package. So that, that would be interesting. And the last thing we need is, is to do more integration, like I mentioned, having apps show up in the task manager, having, for instance, nine type associations. So if you receive a Word document in your Android email client, you can click and it opens in Word on your Android device, things like that. That's also kind of tricky because, once again, many of these things need to be part of the Android package, which is Basically, you specify at compile time, and you build the package, and you sign the package, and you distribute that. So you cannot, after the fact, tell that tell Android that, yeah, by the way, this package also handles uh, Word document. Once once you install Word, you have to specify that at compile time. So I don't know how how that's going to work. And of course. The last thing is the QMU support so that we can run Intel binaries on ARM devices. And I've been actually playing with that and it's working reasonably well. There are some bugs in QMU, unfortunately, um, which I was hoping we would have QMU people that we can blame. And, uh, no, they probably <laughs> shouldn't. You should ask first and then said. Well, I went to a few talks yesterday trying to find QMU people without success. Um, yeah, so the way I'm doing QMU, actually, uh, okay. here's the architecture with QMU. So normally what you do with QMU is you simply run the whole of one under QMU and then in theory, everything works just fine. You get uh, Wine x86 and you run that under QMU and it works. The thing is on Android you cannot do that because parts of Wine are running inside the Java process. And on an ARM device you cannot get an x86 Java VM and run the Java process under QMU. So what I'm actually doing is that I'm using native ARM binaries for all of the wine parts. So I explore the TXE and of course NTDLL, Win32, um, Kernel32 and so on are all built for ARM. And so this is all native ARM code, this is all native ARM code, this is all native code. And only at the point where we try to run an x86 binary, then I will launch a QMU process and run this specific binary inside the QMU process. So the advantage here is that, of course, you get much better performance because everything apart from the from the wine binary is running natively. The wine server, in particular, is running natively, so you get full speed there. All the window management is running natively. You get the, the full speed here. So basically, you have only one small, or not so small, depending on what you want. <laughs> At this point, it's only solitaire, because that's the only thing that doesn't trigger QMU bugs. So <laughs> it's, it's fairly small. But it actually runs surprisingly well. I was When I tried this, I was expecting that it would be totally unusable. And it's actually usable. I'm still hoping we can fix the QMU bugs and get Microsoft Office working so that we can assess the performance with the real app. It, it really looks like 
we can we can do something with that. Of course, the drawback with this approach is that because all of these are native binaries, you basically need two full versions of one. You have the ARM version of one for all these processes, and you have the x86 version of one for this process. So it makes the package twice as big, which was already a problem with only one version. But it's working, and I actually have a device here that nobody is going to be able to see because it's very small. But I have a screenshot of the device. <laughs> I still bought the device so you can see I'm not cheating. <laughs> so I bet nobody sees it. <laughs> I can launch. It works. I'm solitaire on the launch. <laughs> so you can come here after the talk and see that it's for real. And this actually demonstrates also some of the problems we have with the scaling. Because here I'm reporting high DP, DPIs, so all the interface elements that are done by Wine are scaled up. But for instance, the score here is done by Solitaire and it's not scaled up because Solitaire doesn't expect high DPI screens. Or for instance, the, the icon over there is pretty much unreachable. I mean, if you have to, to touch that with a finger, there's no way you can click this icon. So that's, that's the sort of issue we, we have. This is an especially high DPI device. So, uh, the difference is pretty obvious. Actually, you can, you can read the text here because it's blown up. But on the device, it's actually pretty hard to read, even, even for me at this distance. So. Right, so that's what I'm hoping to to do once we fix the QMU bugs, we should be able to basically run everything the exact same way as we did on uh, Intel devices. Of course, there are a number of issues with that. Um, if we go back to the architecture design, because we now have ARM processes and Intel processes running with the same Wine server. And the Wine server is, is meant to support that. That it support for multiple architectures, but there are issues, for instance, in the registry. Because the Windows registry, you have CPU information. So, do you put ARM CPU information or Intel CPU information in the registry? That's that the sort of issues that we need to solve. Basically, to have kind of a transparent view of the registry depending on which process is querying it, you return the Intel version or the ARM version. Stuff like that. Well, just like on x86? Yeah, it's, it's cool. kind of the same mechanism as 32 and 64 bits. Except there are no Windows mechanism for that, so we need to, we need to invent some. So you can do it better than Microsoft? Yes, yes. <laughs> shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> So that's it for this presentation. Some question. I'm actually going to ask the first question because I know everybody is going to ask that. Actually, since I did the demo, the initial demo last year, I've been getting mail about once a week from people. When can I get one library? So, well, you have to be a little patient. At the moment, it's basically all on my disk, and it's not really in a state that I can <coughs> give to someone and have it do something useful for anybody else. I will be trying to release patches I mean, as I go. Everything that's not <coughs> related to the graphics driver has been merged. I'm hoping also to merge the QMU stuff, because that's relatively straightforward. 
the graphics driver is going to take a while before it is available. <coughs> and also at this point, I don't really need anybody to test the code and find problems because it's not, it's not hard to find problems. I can do it myself. <coughs> so that's all I had. Are there other questions? Not really, but why, when do we get that on Linux on uh, ARM then? Because that, the driven part can be useful for that. Sure, sure. That's, that's the idea. I mean, I can merge that part and it can be used on any platform. Yes? Doesn't Windows RT have a mechanism to run Intel binaries on Windows RT yet? It does not. No. Windows <laughs> RT is basically that. Yeah, one thing you could do is to run Windows uh, ARM binaries on ARM devices. But well, of course, they they don't they don't even officially let you run those. They exactly. only let you run the Microsoft ones that ship with it. Yeah, you cannot you cannot get ARM binaries to run. And even if you could, I mean, there are like a hundred times more Android apps than WinRT apps, so there's probably nothing you need. So that's why the focus is on desktop apps. And additionally, all the, as far as I know, the Win, WinRT and also Windows Phone APIs are pretty much unsupported in Wine at the moment. Yes, yes. You can run uh, a Windows Phone command line application if you, if you happen to build such an exit. That works. But. Actually, there are people that are submitting patches to get those API DLLs into Wine and preventing them on Windows Phone. Yes, that was me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how to get it fixed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just a small matter of code. Did you say I've thought about a use case where you use the, the phone as a desktop device? So you put it somewhere and then uh, you use Bluetooth keyboard and uh, next normal monitor. And then run, so like you open your, your mind application once you have the setup. Sure, you can do that. I mean, if you have a hardware keyboard and mouse uh, and big screen, we'll take advantage of it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that would work. Uh, I mean, you, you want both. You don't want to yes. be limited yeah, to, yeah. to that case. But yeah, it definitely well, works. Like, yeah, uh, Canonical tries to do this kind of... Uh, yeah, yeah, of exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's actually the way you most likely want to use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can put PowerPoint on your phone, but yeah. it's only really usable once you plug your phone into a big screen. But yeah, that, that would work. Yes. What kind of memory and storage requirements are there to run Solitaire for Office? Solitaire is, is trivial, but yeah, Office is, is pretty big. Um, um, initially, the virtual box session I had had the 256 megs of RAM, and that was not enough for Office. So I had to bump it to 1 gig of RAM. <coughs> in virtual box, so that would be pretty much the same on, a, on an actual device. But most devices have, have that kind of memory now. So, uh, uh, whatever presentations, uh, PowerPoint as well, was actually running in one gig? Yes, yes. That's a one gig virtual box. Uh, yeah. <coughs> and the disk space is, is actually, again, depends on the application. I mean, one is about 50 megs. It's, I don't know, 100 megs once it's extracted. But then if you install Office, it's, it's a couple of gigs. So you need, you need that space on your device. Yeah, <coughs> you could run PowerPoint on, on Windows PC or something like that. Maybe not. Yeah. Um, you need space for Windows. We don't need space for Windows. <laughs> Any questions? You can also to support iOS. No. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's completely different. And it could be done in theory, but Apple is nev never going to let you in the App Store, so nobody is going to be able to get your phone. But sure, in theory, someone could do an iOS driver. Yeah. Um, do you need um, a rooted device to run this? No. no. Okay. I. I use rooted devices for debugging, but that's a lot easier, but no, you, at the moment it's a bit tricky because 
I have not tried to run the installers, so I install basically the app on a PC and then copy the files over. And for that, you need root permissions so that you can modify the, the files inside the application. But ultimately, you, you run the installer on the device and then everything uses the app permissions and you don't need to. Questions? Yeah, so I is the plan for OpenGL to also do remote procedure calls, like you do it for basic Windows at the moment? Or do you see any other option? No, the plan would be to get access to the OpenGL surface and send the calls directly to but, that. Uh, let's say you are on an, uh, on an ARM device and running an X86 binary, where you're going the X86 that's, OpenGL binary. That's harder. So, but what I basically had in mind is with the command string for D3D, yeah. would it make sense to design it in such a way that the, what's currently the thread that executes everything could be a separate process? Because we have a remote procedure called sure. D3D at some point, sure. so that could be used for D3D stuff. Well, yeah, resource updates need some. Tri uh, yeah. Need some better way, but streaming and, and the data itself is not an issue. Yeah, but I mean, really, you don't really need to go through the other process except for getting access to the surface. Not sure of that, then you can do everything natively, except, of course, in the x86 case. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you very much.